So let's talk about your health today, your physical health. Do you have headaches or stomach aches or reoccurring flare-ups? Are you the kind of person that says, whenever I'm stressed, I get skin eruptions or backache or headaches? That doesn't mean you're imagining your pain or your pain is psychosomatic. The pain is real, but sometimes it means that we have unconsciously created it. You know, I've been talking to many doctors and they all say the same thing. 70% of people turning up at the doctors with real illnesses, real migraines, real stomach aches, real skin issues, real problems, do not have diseased organs, they have diseased thinking. And that goes back very much to how we talk to ourselves. When you say things like, this commute will be the death of me. My boss is driving me crazy. My work is killing me. This workload is making me insane. These hours are making me lose my mind. Your mind, which wants to keep you alive on the planet, thinks, oh, this place called job is killing you. I need to give you an answer and then you can't go to that place called job. You see, I remember years and years ago, I'd written a book. I was so excited, I was giving a talk. And I wanted to give this talk. It was to a whole group of journalists coming to this special place, a beautiful hotel for me to talk about my book. I woke up in the morning and I had a migraine I've never had in my life. I could hardly get my head off the pillow. I'm like, wow, how can I have a migraine the day I'm giving this talk? I was thinking, what did I say to myself? I know this stuff. My agent said that one of these journalists is coming is really mean and harsh and be prepared for them to write horrible stuff about you because that's what they do. And that one little thing had triggered this headache because I began to think about, well, I better look out for that one. I better, and actually that one wrote a piece going, I thought this girl was mad, I thought Marissa was mad, I listened to her talk, but then she said, but actually it was amazing. And she actually gave me a phenomenal write-up. But this is not about me, it's about you. Because when you tell your mind, I don't want this, I'm scared of it, your mind will create illnesses to get you out of stuff. And once we learn that illness gets us out of things, we keep doing it. So be aware of your language and stop saying this commute is killing me, my boss is driving me crazy, my boss is like this with everyone, it's nothing to do with me, I'm great at my job, I'm excited about doing this interview, I'm thrilled about the presentation, I can't wait for my yearly assessment, don't dread it, don't fear it, don't invite illness as a way to get out, welcome it and be excited. I want to go into this more. I've been working with clients for 34 years that turn up with all kinds of illnesses. I've seen every doctor, they don't understand why I've got polycystic ovary syndrome or an autoimmune disease. My body is attacking me. I've got these headaches, these lumps, this skin condition. I bite my lip, I grind my teeth, or I've heard everything. And I realized over a period of time that whatever my clients came in with, there were only three things that would cause it and they all began with P. And the first one was to protect me. One of my clients told me that her grandfather tried to touch her, put his hands in her underwear. She told her mother, he said, don't be silly. You're making it up. I don't believe you. But he continued to do it. And then she got contact dermatitis. And amazingly, the skin right here in her groin would fall off when you put your hand on it. Her grandfather was revolted by that never touched her again. I thought that was genius that her little 11 year old girl's mind created that because she was thinking, I got to stop my granddad doing that, putting his hand up my skirt. I hate it. My mum isn't protecting me in the body that I'll do it. Give you contact dermatitis on your inner thigh. And that's what happens. And many people who are molested and abused become big, they become heavy, or they get all kinds of issues. So very often we create an illness to protect us. I can't do that because of the anxiety. I can't do that because of this nervous twitch. So there's the protection. Here's the second one beginning with P punishing me. I think, well, my body wouldn't punish me. Oh, it would. Your mind becomes a judge, a juror, and a jailer. People say things like, you know, I stole money from my mum. I cheated in my exams. I kissed my best friend's boyfriend. I had a fling with my friend's husband. I was such a terrible person. People used to wear hair shirts and whip themselves in the street because we have this need to atone for guilt. And I worked with a girl who had Crohn's disease. She was in so much pain. And she told me this story of running off with her best friend's husband. When we were talking, she said, you know, I've created this pain. I never knew it until today. I've got to be in pain to atone for what I did. And I said, you know what? This was 20 years ago. You've done more time than a murderer. 
And when I got her to forgive herself, it all stopped almost instantly. So the mind will punish you if you're saying that I feel so guilty, I feel so bad, I can't believe I did that, I've got this shame, this blame, this guilt. You're allowed to make mistakes. And when you recognize that, you stop punishing. What's the third P? I call it prioritize me. I was a little boy and he had terrible eczema. And when I talked to him, he said, we were talking about the eczema. I said, I know this is a silly thing, darling, but imagine the eczema would be your friend and in order to help you. And he was only five and he said, every night I stand like that and mommy puts cream and wet bandage all over my arms, just put any cream on that baby. And in that instant, I understood, and so did he, that he'd said to mommy, can I have a massage, mommy? No, you're a big boy. Mommy, can you massage me? No, 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 this is just for the baby. And he thought, I thought, I want mommy to put cream on me. And guess what happened? The genie, your mind who says, your wish is my command, said, okay, your mommy to put cream on you? Now you got eczema putting cream all over you. So prioritize me as does this illness, this issue, this pain, this symptom get me attention. Kids who get sick, you have allergies or asthma or eczema, all kinds of issues get a lot of attention. It's not all the case. I mean, some kids are born with issues, but many children create these because they become prioritized. The illness, the issues, the flare ups, prioritize them. So let's take a minute now and think about, okay, let's say you've got a skin condition, an allergy, constant sinus infections, headaches, painful stomach, bad diet, irritable bowel, all kinds of stuff. Could that be to punish you? Could it be to protect you? Could it be to prioritize you? Whatever it is, when you've worked it out, oh yeah. When I got ill, my parents were nice to me. My dad wouldn't shout at me when I was hurt. So we don't choose this, but we do unconsciously request it. So how do we stop it? Well, we go back and understanding is power. We go, okay, I remember being 12 and thinking that thought. And I'm gonna forgive myself because you are allowed to make mistakes. You are allowed to make a lot of mistakes. You know what you're not allowed to do? You are not allowed to punish your own gorgeous body, the most priceless, mind-boggling thing you will ever own. You're not allowed to do that, to punish it, to make it sick, because you're a human being who made a mistake. I made a mistake, we all make mistakes, I learned a lot, that's not me. I'm not that kid who wanted to get out of school or exams or visiting their dad or their mom or their grand, I'm not that kid. So go back and go, it's not me. That's not me, that person, that kid, that younger me that did that, thought of that, came up with it, it's not me anymore. I made a mistake. And the only way you learn in life is to make a mistake. And finally, free yourself from trying to be perfect. That's not a blessing, it's a curse. You are a flawed person living a flawed life with other flawed people, and so am I. I call it being flawsome, and it's a great place to be. You want to be flawsome. Your vulnerabilities are the basis of your friendships. It makes you real. So to get over punishing, protecting, prioritizing, remember that isn't you anymore. It was you a long time ago and you didn't know what you know now. Forgive yourself for making mistakes. Make peace with everything. And remember you are a flawed person. I promise you I have many clients who try to be perfect, even appear to be perfect, and I promise you this, they're the unhappiest and always the loneliest clients I've ever met because people can't relate to perfection. They relate to vulnerability, they relate to flawsome. Let's all be flawsome, let's celebrate it. And we don't have to be sick or ill or have all of these psychosomatic issues because you can be at peace with being a flawed person, having flawed relations with flawed people, and we can celebrate instead of trying to fix it. And this will really help, you know, when I had cancer, I started to say every day, my body is a wellness making machine. My body does wellness, only wellness, always one. So let's make some affirmations now. Sit with me, repeat after me. My body is a wellness making machine. My body does wellness, only wellness, always wellness. My body is perfect. Every system in my body is working in perfect harmony with every other system. 
Every organ in my body is in the right place, doing the right work, communicating with every other organ. My body is mind-boggling and priceless. I think thoughts of wellness. I hold images of wellness. I appreciate my body. I love my body. I celebrate my body. Every day I think of all the amazing things my body does for me, and I'm so grateful. And I do wonderful things back. I do just a few wonderful things for my body. I get enough sleep, I hydrate, I eat better, I think better thoughts. And as I do just a few amazing things for this amazing body, it does hundreds and thousands of things back. I love my body. I'm in love with my body. I'm in love with a wellness making machine that is my body. I do wellness, always wellness, only wellness. I come back to wellness. I return to wellness. I always return to wellness. My body is phenomenal. My body is awesome. My immune system is incredible. I have a phenomenal, enviable, reliable, incredible immune system. It keeps me well. It keeps me healthy. I sleep perfectly. Every system of my body is perfect. My immune system, my skeletal system, my digestive system, my elimination system, my central nervous system, my immune system, and my metabolic system, they're all perfect. So please remember the mind learns by repetition. It doesn't really care what you tell it, but it works to make it real. So tell yourself these statements of truth every day until you notice they're becoming who you are and notice they're impacting your health in the best way. And if you want more of this, I have an amazing Heal Your Body Now meditation that you will love.